Hi everyone, I'm Laura Nelkin and this is a companion video for my Kairos shawl and Kairos cowl. In Greek, Kairos means a propitious moment for action or decision. And in my mind, that means it's the perfect time to cast on for one of these projects. Both of these Kairos projects were inspired by the Kairos cuff, which I designed a few years ago for Lola's Choice, my small knitted kit club. I love the stitch that I designed for that cuff and I've always wanted to do other projects with it. So I wanna tell you a bit about the Kairos cuff. Yeah, it's hard to say. I want to tell you a bit about the Cairo shawl and the Cairo cowl, kind of tell you how they're both constructed. I'll then go into materials that you need to knit either of these projects. I'll talk about gauge. I'll give you tips and tricks for both the shawl and the cowl separately. And I'll kind of go over beading as one overall technique to, because you'll use that either in the cuff or the shawl or the cowl. So if you don't want to watch this whole video, you can jump ahead to different steps as you're working a part of the pattern that maybe you need to go over how to do a reverse yarn over again, or you can watch through from beginning to end. That is completely up to you. So the first thing to do is go over the construction of the shawl and the cowl so you understand how they're knit. I'm wearing the shawl here and I'm just going to kind of take it off just so that you can see how it is constructed. What I love about the Kairos shawl is that it is a long narrow shawl which makes it kind of a really nice size for wearing and wrapping around your neck. It is started down here. You cast on it this tip and you work towards the center. When you get to the center point, you then work some really fun kind of textured linen stitch. And then you work the Cairo stitch, which is beaded on one by one ribbing. And then you work linen stitch on the other side and then continue on to the end in stockinette stitch decreasing down. Once you finish the body of the shawl, you then pick up stitches all along the edge of the shawl, and I'm certainly gonna go over how to do that with you. And then you work that little striped border down, and it is finished with a really fun Pico bind off that I'll certainly show you also. So those are kind of how the shawl is constructed and made. Now, if we look at the cowl, sorry, as I drop everything else on my table, the cowl is really interesting. I think of this cowl as a phobius. So you're starting with a garter stitch strip that is worked in one long continuous strip. You start that with a provisional cast on. So you have live stitches to graft that strip together. When you go to graft that strip, you actually twist it, creating a Mobius edge and then you pick up stitches around that Mobius edge and end up working out in a Mobius shape going down and you introduce another color in there to have a little bit of a contrasting color. And then the Cairo stitch is worked in one by one ribbing before you bind off your cowl. Um, you will see with the Kairos cowl, I have a cuff on my cowl and that's a really nice way to cinch up the cowl but it also covers up that graft if you aren't happy with how your graft looks a really fun little thing about using that cuff is it kind of hides that point for you a little bit with the shawl you can make the cuff to wear to go around the shawl to hold it in place or you can wear it around a wrist as i'm doing right now you have the option to wear them either way so that is kind of just a basic the construction of the shawl and the cowl, how they are both knit, and now I kind of want to go deeper into materials with you. So let's do that next. Okay, this is the fun part, materials for your Kairos project. I do have kits available for Kairos and they are available at Emma's Yarn Stockists or you can go and do a stash dive and work with yarn that you maybe already have on hand or that you're looking at when you're out and about. 
I use both a full skein of fingering weight superwash sock yarn and a mini skein. I used Emma's Yarn Practically Perfect Sock, one of my favorite superwash sock yarns. It's got 400 yards in 100 grams. And then I used a coordinating mini from Emma's and this one has 81 yards on it. So these are both fingering weight. They are the exact same construction of yarn. And what is really important for your mini skein, which is your CC to your main color, which is your MC, is that they contrast with each other. So when you look at them together, they should really pop. One trick I like to do is sometimes look at my yarns and hold them away from me and squint. That must look really funny on camera, but if you hold them away and squint at them and they're not popping from each other, if they kind of like zhuzh together into one color of yarn, then that's what's gonna happen in your pattern. And then that patterning in the linen stitch and in the striping on the shawl and in the cowl will get lost. So you wanna make sure that those two colors contrast from each other. Then for the fun part, the other thing that you need for Kairos is beads. I made a bead mix. If you have been following me for a while, you know that I love making bead soup. It's one of my favorite things to do. So this bead soup is 40 grams of a mix of three different sizes of Japanese seed beads. It has size six Japanese seed beads, which are these bigger beads here. It has a few size eight beads, which are smaller. And then it has a fair number of size eight Delica seed beads, which are a Miyuki Japanese seed bead that is a perfect cylinder and has a hole that's a really similar size to the size six bead. So if you're gonna go ahead and make your own bead soup mix, you're gonna wanna make it a blend of those three sizes. I don't use that many of the size eight. I use mostly the size six and the Delica bead. And you just wanna make sure when you look at that mix, I'm gonna kind of hold it up next to your yarn, that you're pulling colors that kind of pop from different colors in the yarn. I tend to choose beads that have a little bit of an iridescence to them or have a lining or have a rainbow finish, something that's gonna make them pop a little bit on the skein. You don't wanna choose a bead that's so subtle that it's going to get lost when you go to work with it. So make sure that those beads have something a little bit like sparkly and special going on so that they show up on your yarn. That would be my trick for you if you're gonna make your own bead soup. The other thing that comes in the kit or that you will need to get on your own is a, here, sorry, I'll move this over so you guys can read, really see it. This is a dental floss threader and I use this for stringing the beads onto your yarn. The beads in this stitch are pre-strung on your yarn. And then this is a leather clasp made by my friend Renee at Uncle Joe's Saddlery in Burdett, New York. She's right down the road from me on a few back roads you can get from Renee's to my house. And these clasps I originally designed for the Kairos cuff. You can see I just whip stitched them down to each end of the cuff. If you don't have access to these, I do sell extras in my shop, but if you wanna go ahead and do something on your own, you could certainly sew a button and have like a little I cord to close up the, um, the cuff. You don't necessarily need to have one of these clasps. I just think they really add a really fun kind of modern unexpected finish to the cuff, which I'm always looking for when I'm doing things to try to make them give my own little touch, if you will. So material wise, you'll also need needles to get gauge. And we'll talk about gauge in a second. You'll need a tapestry needle for, for weaving in your ends at the end. And then if you're doing the cowl, you will also need some smooth scrap yarn for doing the provisional cast on and a crochet hook, and then maybe some point protectors. I did use double pointed needles for the cowl and that's all written into that pattern for you. So that's everything for materials. Now that we've talked about that, let's quickly talk about gauge. Okay, gauge for Kairos cowl and Kairos shawl is exactly the same. I give you the gauge of 24 stitches by 30 rows 
equals four inches blocked on the larger needle. So what you'll do is cast on at least 24 stitches, maybe 28 stitches, and you'll knit at least four inches and you'll bind off that swatch and then soak it in warm water, treat it just like you're gonna treat your final cowl or shawl, and then wait for it to dry completely and measure it and see if you have 24 stitches over four inches. I would say for both of these that stitch gauge matters more than row gauge. If your stitch gauge is 25 stitches or 23 stitches, I don't think that you need to redo your gauge. But if your gauge is any more different than that, I would, if your, let's say your gauge is 26 stitches over four inches, I would grab a bigger needle size and try again. If your gauge is 22 stitches, which means your gauge is too loose, grab a smaller needle and then try again with that needle. The reason that you need to get gauge is not so much that it's going, your cowl's not gonna fit or your shawl is not gonna fit. One, your beads that might not behave correctly because your beads, the way the stitch is designed, the beads need to kind of move a little bit on your stitches. And two, you could run out of yarn or you might not get enough out of that skein of yarn. So I designed this pattern to have about 10% left over of both the main color and the contrast color. But if you don't get gauge, you run the risk of running out of yarn. So that's why I urge people to do gauge, even though this is a shawl. If you have a ton of yarn, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're working from the kit, take a moment to work a gauge swatch and those are kind of the general rules to help you stay on track with that. Definitely ask questions below if you have any questions about gauge, something I didn't cover where you're kind of wondering or your gauge is something and you're like, am I good to go? Just ask and I'm happy to answer you there. Okay, now that we have talked about gauge, the next thing is to jump into beading techniques. And that technique is gonna to apply to both the cuff, the shawl, and the cowl. Okay, yay, it's time to bead. It's my favorite thing. So the beads on the Cairo stitch, and I'm just having the cuff right here so you can see it, are pre-strung onto your yarn and they're worked into one by one ribbing. So what I want to do with you right now with the beading is just show you how to pre-string some beads onto your yarn if you've never done that before. And then I will show you, oh, I had an extra piece of yarn in there just in case I needed it. Um, and then I will show you how to work the stitch. So when I pre-string beads onto yarn, I take my dental floss threader and I thread my yarn through it and I give myself a nice long tail. And then what I like to do is just grab some beads and put them into the palm of my hand and then go ahead with the tip of my dental floss threader and I just pick up a few beads, put them onto my yarn and then slide them down. The goal here is that you are creating yarn that is beaded and has beads on it. So as you get those beads onto your yarn, you kind of want to slide them down and out of the way. So then you just kind of continue on like that. If you're using a dental floss threader, I'm pretty sure that if you're a dental hygienist or a dentist, you are not going to agree with what I'm gonna do next. But I just put the dental floss threader in my mouth like that and hold it with my teeth, and then I can slide my beads easily down onto my yarn. I've gotten in trouble in classes before when I've done that in class, and then there's like a dentist in class who basically yells at me, your teeth are not a tool. But it's just really helpful. I need a third hand sometimes. So you'll continue on like that, stringing on the number of beads that your pattern calls for. And once you get them onto your yarn, then you'll reattach your yarn to start working the beaded stitch. So now I'm going to show you how to work with the beads on your knitting. 
Okay, let me show you how easy it is to work with the beads. I just have some one by one ribbing on my needles and I just wanna kind of break down the technique for you before I show you on a swatch that has the official Cairo stitch on it. So I'm going to go into the stitch as if to knit and then I'm gonna go down my yarn and grab a bead that's already pre-strung onto my yarn and slide it up, but I'm not gonna slide it all the way up. I'm gonna kind of slide it so it's on my working yarn. So when I wrap my yarn around and I pull that stitch through, that stitch is just sitting on top of my needle like that. If you end up in a situation where your bead is sitting in between your stitches, that is a totally different technique. For this technique, you want that bead to be sitting up on your needle like that. And now I am going to purl one and I'm gonna knit one and I'm gonna purl one and this next stitch, I am going to knit a stitch with a bead again. So I'm gonna slide up that bead, make sure that it's on the working yarn, wrap the yarn around and pull it through and then I'm going to purl one and then knit the next stitch. So that is row one of working with the beads. Now on row two, you're gonna see that when I go to work across this ribbing, I have to think about what those beads are doing on my needle. So if you look at these beads, when I go to purl into that stitch on this row, that bead can be all the way on the right leg of the stitch, so it's all the way to the front of the needle, or that bead can be all the way on the left leg of the stitch, so it's to the back of the needle. When you read your patterns, you'll see that the pattern says, purl one bead left or purl one bead right. And that's what it's talking about there, is do you have your bead on the right leg of the stitch, or do you have your bead on the left leg of the stitch? So I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna work this first bead with the bead to the right of the stitch, and I'm gonna work that second bead with the bead to the left leg of the stitch. So I'm gonna purl one, and I'm just knitting the stitches or working the stitches as they present themselves. So I'm knitting the knits and purling the purls. Now I'm going to purl one, I'm gonna purl over that stitch so the bead ends up on the right leg of that stitch. And then I am going to come across and when I come to the next stitch with the bead, I'm gonna make sure that bead is on the left leg of the stitch all the way to the back. And I'm gonna purl that stitch and knit one and purl one. And then I am at the end of that row and you can see both of those beads worked into the stitches right there. So that is the exact same concept that I used on the Kairos cuff right here, but you can see I used a bead soup, so there's all different colors of beads, but all that's happening is on the right side rows, I'm knitting a stitch with a bead, and then on the wrong side rows, I'm massaging those beads, I like to say. Massaging sounds better than manipulating. I massage those beads onto the right leg or the left leg and work into that stitch. So that is the stitch that's used for the Cairo shawl and for the Kairos cuff. The one thing that's different about the Kairos cowl is because that one by one ribbing, and I'm gonna actually grab the cowl to show it to you before I get into that with my knitting. Because for a Mobius, your edge is reversible, I wanted to have beads on both the right side and wrong side. So you are both knitting stitches with beads and purling stitches with a bead. So let me show you how to purl a stitch with a bead. So when you come to that on the Kairos cowl, you know what to do. So you bring your yarn to the front, you put your needle into your stitch, and then you go and grab a bead and slide that up and then pop that bead through. So again, that bead will be sitting up on that needle, but I've purled the stitch instead of knitting that stitch. Let me show you that one more time. So I'm gonna come into the stitch as if to purl, cause I'm purling it, sliding a bead up, 
wrapping that bead around that stitch around with the bead and then pulling it through so that that bead is sitting up on the needle right there. Now when you come back on the next row, the technique is exactly the same where you're going to move that bead to the right or the left, depending on what the pattern tells you to do so that that bead ends up in the right place for your pattern. So that is the basic idea. I do have a little bit on my needles right here. Let me just grab a second needle. You need two needles to knit with. This is not crochet. I had to have that lined up for you. So this swatch right here is a little bit of the Cairo stitch that is worked on the shawl in the center of the shawl. This is the nailed it colorway. So I have these really beautiful kind of like coppery and iridescent and hematite beads sitting up on the yarn. And what I really love about this stitch is how plush it is because it's one by one ribbing. If I kind of pull it apart, you can really see how the beads are sitting on those knit columns. And if I'm on a row one right now for this pattern, I just kind of want to show you what's going to happen one more time. I'm going to knit one and then I'm knitting one with a bead. So I've got to go, should have had those up a little closer. I'm going to go grab a bead that's a little size eight cutie and pop him through. And now I'm going to purl one, knit one, Purl one, and I'm going to continue across like that where I knit one with a bead, and then I purl one, knit one, purl one, go on to knit that next stitch with a bead, and now I am going to purl one, knit one, purl one. I'm basically following row one of the Cairo section in the shawl right now. And now I'm going to knit one with a bead. I'm going to purl one. I'm going to slip one purlwise with the yarn in front. And now I'm going to knit the last stitch. And that is row one. When I come back to work row two, I'm going to look at the pattern and this first bead is to the right. The second bead is to the left. The third bead is to the right and the fourth bead is to the left. So if you want, when you go to work those wrong side rows, you can actually just move your beads in place. So when you're working across, you can just work across in pattern and not have to stop every time you get to a stitch with a bead to be like, is it bead right or bead left? What happens, like a little trick for this stitch, is you're always gonna alternate right or left. So if you look at the pattern and the first bead you run into is to the right, the next one's gonna be to the left. And the next one's gonna be to the right and the next one's gonna be to the left going across. So that's kind of an easy trick to help you set up every row if you look at that first stitch with a bead and see what the placement of that bead is on that stitch. You can just do opposites going across the row to set up before you go to work it. So that is the beading in a nutshell. It is really not hard. I think people get very surprised with knitting with beads. They think that it's going to be very complicated and it is quite easy and it adds a really lovely weight and sparkle to your knitting. So that's beading that applies to the cuff, it applies to the cowl, and it applies to the shawl. There are a few things that you need to know for the shawl and for the cowl, and I'm gonna jump into those next. Okay, let's jump into some tips that you need to know for the shawl. The first thing that I wanna do with you is the first four setup rows and then show you how to do the increase. This basically is the start of your triangle where you're increasing out one edge before you get to the center to the color work. So um, the pattern has you with main color cast on five stitches with the cast on of your choice. I'm just gonna quickly use a long tail cast on and cast on five stitches. So I've got five stitches. I'm assuming that you know how to do a cast on. I do have separate videos for cast ons if that's new to you. Now for this next row, I am going to knit three. 
and then I'm going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front and then knit the last stitch. And now I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to slip one purl wise, knit one, slip one purl wise with yarn in front, purl one, and slip one purl wise with yarn in front. What I'm doing with these rows is setting up the edging so that you have an integrated I-cord edging at the top of the shawl and then a slip stitch that is the last stitch of every wrong side row that is the edge you pick up stitches along. I think it's important to know why you're doing what you're doing. Now this next stitch, I'm gonna knit one and now I'm gonna knit into the front and back of this next stitch and I'm going to knit one and I'm going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front and then I'm going to knit one and now I have six stitches on my needles and now I'm going to turn my work I am going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front I'm going to knit one I'm going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front and then I'm going to purl two and slip one purl wise with yarn in front so those are the four setup rows. After you've worked those, you're gonna work 202 increase rows. And I use one of my favorite increases on this shawl, which is the reverse yarn over. And I'm excited to show you how that works. So the reverse yarn over, it takes kind of two rows to work this technique. I'm going to knit two. And now I'm going to reverse yarn over. So typically if you made a yarn over, you would bring your yarn up and over your needle like that. But I'm going to go reverse so that the left leg of the yarn over is to the front of the needle and the right leg is to the back. And now I'm going to knit to the last two stitches and I am going to slip one purl wise with the yarn in front and I am going to knit that last stitch. And now I'm going to turn my work and I'm just getting some extra working yarn here. Get my tail out of the way. I am going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front and I'm going to knit one and I'm going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front and now I am going to purl to the last stitch. When you get to that reverse yarn over, which is actually the next stitch right here, just purl it normally. And what that does is create a twisted stitch. I'm gonna show it to you from the front of the work. It creates a little twisted stitch right there. So you're creating an increase that does not tighten up the row below. So if you work to make one right right there, like you typically might do for an increase, what that does is make each stitch on each side of that increase a little bit smaller. But what this reverse yarn over does is make it so that you're not tightening up your stitches, but you still have a right leaning increase. So now you're going to continue through until you get to the texture stitch section. And I do have a little bit of that on my needles to show you how to do the color work. All right. I love this little stitch right here. It's so sweet and it really just adds in a little bit of depth before you get to the beading section. I already have my contrast colors. I already worked a few rows. So I am at the point where I'm going to use the main color and I'm just going to work two rows for you so you can see how this has worked. If you've never worked it before, I just need to get a little bit more working yarn so that I am good to go here. So I'm working with my main color and I am going to knit two and then I am going to knit one, slip one purl wise with yarn in front across to, I believe it is the last stitch. And I kind of work this stitch as one where I'm bringing my yarn to the front as I'm working it. coming across and then I'm going to knit that last stitch. Let me kind of clean up all my yarn back here.
Now when I come to the next row with the main color, I'm going to slip one purlwise with yarn in front and then knit one and then slip one purlwise with yarn in front and then I'm going to purl one, slip one purlwise with yarn in back, purl one, slip one purlwise with yarn in back, purl one, slip one purlwise with yarn in back, Purl one, slip one purl wise with yarn and back. Purl one, slip one purl wise with yarn and back. And then to the last two stitches, and now I'm going to purl one and slip one purl wise with yarn in front for that last stitch. And then you're going to work the same thing with the same two rows, but with the contrasting color. And that's how you get that great little linen stitch detail. So that is the color work. Next up, I want to show you picking up stitches because I think that is something that can really stump knitters if they haven't done it often. So let me just kind of get set up with that and then I will show you how to do that. Okay, so you have to pretend that I am at the end of my shawl and I worked a bind off on the wrong side row and so I have one stitch left on my needle and I've kept my yarn attached. So now using the main color that is still attached and with wrong side facing, you're going to pick up 345 stitches evenly across the bottom edge of the shawl. So what you should know is that you have about 259 slip stitches along the bottom edge of the shawl. And if you pick up one stitch in each slip stitch twice and then two stitches in one slip stitch once and repeat that across, you'll end up with about 345 stitches. And let me show you what that means. So we're going to be picking up and knitting and here's a slip stitch right here along the edge of my shawl. So I'm gonna come underneath both legs of that slip stitch and I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through. And that is one stitch picked up. And now I'm gonna do that again where I go underneath both stitches, wrap the yarn around and pull it through. Now on this next stitch, I'm gonna pick up one stitch through one leg and one stitch through the other leg. So I'm gonna pick up and knit right there and then I'm gonna go underneath this other leg and pick up and knit one stitch. So that's two stitches picked up. And now I'm gonna repeat that and I wanna do that one more time just because I know picking up stitches is a thing, right? So I'm going under both legs of that slip stitch and I am picking up and knitting. Underneath both legs, picking up and knitting. And now I'm gonna go underneath one leg and pick up one stitch. And then I'm gonna go underneath another leg and pick up another stitch. And you're gonna continue that way across until you have 345 stitches picked up along the bottom edge of the shawl. Once you have all of those stitches picked up, I can just kind of, what's fun is grabbing my shawl to show you what's gonna happen. You're picking up stitches right along there and then you're working this really easy two color stripe along the bottom edge of the shawl and then you get to work this fun beaded pico bind off. So let's do that together, not hard at all. Okay, you can work this bind off with beads or without beads. I'm gonna work it with beads for you. If you're working with beads, you're gonna to need to cut your main color and string on 116 beads with your dental floss threader and then reattach your yarn. If you're not working with beads, you don't need to cut your yarn. So you're gonna use a knitted on cast on and you are gonna, let's just pretend this is my entire, look at my giant shawl I knit. <laughs> I'm gonna come into the stitch and I am going to, with a knitted on cast on, cast on one stitch without a bead. So I'm basically knitting a stitch and then putting that stitch onto the needle. And now I'm gonna cast on one stitch with a bead. So I'm going into the stitch as if to knit it. I'm going down my yarn, I'm grabbing a bead, sliding that bead up, making sure that I've got a bead on that stitch and then putting that stitch onto 
the left hand needle. Now I'm going to knit those two stitches together through the back loop and then I am going to knit one and I'm going to pass the first stitch on the right hand needle over the second stitch. This is all written out in the pattern, don't worry. And now I'm going to bind off three stitches knit wise. So one, two, three. And finally, I'm going to take the stitch on my right hand needle and put it back onto my left hand needle. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to do a knitted on cast on for two stitches. The first one does not have a bead. The second one does have a bead. Then I'm going to knit those two stitches together through the back loop just like that. Well, sometimes my hands get slippery. And now I am going to knit one more stitch and pass that slip stitch over. And now I'm going to bind off three stitch plain, stitches plain. And I find it really helps to count when you do these three stitches. One, two, three. And you're going to continue across like that until you get to the end. And you end up with this really beautiful little beaded pico bind off. Okay, that's everything that I think that you need to know for the shawl. Certainly, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm happy to help you have success with it. The next thing to do is to go over a few tricks that I think you need to know for the cowl. Okay, everybody, time for the Kairos cowl. As I said at the beginning, the Kairos cowl is a phobius. It starts with a long garter stitch strip that is cast on with provisionally cast on stitches so that you have live stitches so you can graft the beginning of the strip to the end of the strip. When you go to graft that strip together, you twist it and that creates a Mobius edge, which is a continuous edge so that you'll be working the rest of the cowl from the center out. If you haven't knit a Mobius before, they are very fun to knit and I'm excited for you that this is your first Mobius that you're knitting. So I want to show you how to do a provisional cast on. I'm going to do this somewhat quickly. And if it is new to you and you want to do a deeper dive into provisional cast ons, I do have like a 45 minute video on my YouTube channel that goes over like a deep dive into provisional cast ons. So go ahead and watch that if you want to go a little bit deeper into provisional cast ons. The first thing that you're going to do is make a slip knot and put that slip knot onto your crochet hook. The biggest mistake that you can make is to take that slip knot and put it onto your needle. Instead, you want to have that slip knot on your crochet hook. Have your crochet hook be about the same size as your knitting needle. Mine's a little bit smaller right here. So now what I'm going to do is hold my crochet hook and my needle parallel to each other and I'm going to take my yarn and put it over both the crochet hook and the needle and pull a loop through. So I'm just gonna take that yarn, go over the needle and the crochet hook, grab the yarn and pull it through. Let's do that again. Over and pull through. And over and pull through. And what you're doing with this smooth scrap yarn is creating a cast on that can be unzipped later when you go to graft the strip together. I'm not going to get a ton of stitches on here right now. I don't think that that's necessary for you to have success. Let's pretend that's the number of stitches that you need for your cowl. Once you're done, what you're going to do is crochet cast on a few extra stitches 
and then grab some scissors, which I totally have right here. Cut your yarn and then pull your end through. The reason that I crocheted a few extra chains there after I did the provisional cast on is I want to know which end to unzip this from. So those extra chains right there let me know that this is the end I should unzip from when it's time to get those live stitches. Now you're going to go ahead and work the first row. And after you work the first row, I find it really important because the center stretch, it st the center strip is garter stitch to place a stitch marker to mark the right side of your work because it's going to be hard for you to know if you're on a right side or wrong side. I believe that you are going for, let me look for it. 200 slip stitches on each side of your shawl. So you'll have 200 garter ridges. If you want, you could place another stitch marker every like 50 garter ridges. So you don't have to keep going back to count all of those garter ridges. Like if you place a marker here and then you work 50 ridges and you place another marker, once you have four markers, you'll know that you have 200 ridges and then it'll be time to stop and do the next step. So use markers as like a trick to help you keep track of your counting so you don't have to like constantly go back and count again to see how far you are along in your knitting. So I've got a strip, a little pretend strip here that is already knit. I've got my slip stitches on my edge. I've got my provisional cast on down here at the beginning and I thought it would be fun to unzip that provisional cast on and put it onto the needles and then graft the two ends of this strip together so that you really see how that works. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm on the beginning here where I did the provisional cast on and I am going to unzip right here and I might have to for this first stitch just kind of lift that loop through to get that onto the needle and then I'm going to be able to go in and pick up those stitches. I believe that I made an eight stitch strip so hopefully if everything went goes well I'll end up with eight stitches on my needle. One can only hope. You can see that I used a really smooth scrap yarn for doing this so that it pulls out very easily. And there we go. And let's see if we have eight. Yes, eight stitches right there on the needle. So the next thing that I want to do is graft these two ends together. So I have already cut my working yarn from the end of my strip. And then I've unzipped my stitches from my garter step. I'm kind of reading the pattern here as we go along. And then I'm gonna hold those two needles parallel together. Have the front needle be the one, the one with the long tail hanging to the right. So I'm already not set up correctly. Have the front needle be the one with the long tail hanging to the right. Then take the back needle and turn it around introducing one twist, so that's a 180 degree turn. That step is very important. That's the step that's turning this into a Mobius strip. So now I've got my yarn threaded onto my needle on my front needle, and then I am going to thread the needle through the first stitch on the back needle purlwise and I'm not gonna slip anything off, so I'm just going through that stitch purlwise and kind of tightening things up a little bit. Now I am going to thread my needle through the first stitch on the front needle knitwise and slip it off, and then go through the um, next stitch on the front needle purlwise and leave it on. And now because I'm grafting in garter stitch, I'm going to do the same thing on the back needle so I'm going to go through the first stitch on the back needle knitwise and slip it off and the, go through the second stitch purlwise and leave it on. If things look a little loose, you can just kind of tighten up your other tail back there. So 
first needle knitwise off, second um, first needle purlwise on, back needle knitwise off, back needle purlwise on, front needle knitwise off, second stitch purlwise on, back needle knitwise off, purlwise on. Now you're just going to continue across like that. This is garter stitch grafting. If you follow the words exactly as they're written in the pattern and then watch this if you get confused, you will be absolutely fine. Now, once you have done that all the way across your strip, the next thing that you're going to do is pick up stitches along the edge. And I'm just going to kind of show you what that looks like moving to a spot that I think will be easier for you to see. You can see these slip stitches across the edge. What I like to do for this step is use a smaller needle because that kind of elongates those stitches less. And what you're going to do is pick up and knit 40 stitches around the tire edge of the shawl. And you kind of, sorry, not the shawl, this is the cowl. You kind of have a choice here. You could go um, underneath both of those loops, grab your yarn and pull it through. Let's see if we can do that. And then go underneath both those strands, grab your yarn and pull it through. You'll see if you do that, that you do end up with these tiny little holes right here as you are picking up those stitches. If those holes bug you, what you can do is go underneath those loops from the back to the front wrap your yarn, your yarn around and pull those stitches over. And what that does is twist those stitches that you've picked up along the edge. Let's do that again. I'm gonna go in and pick up those stitches, twisting them. So if you can see both of those, you can see these are two that I've twisted and these are two that I've worked without twisting. That's kind of where we get into like the art and the science of picking up stitches. I picked mine up twisted because I wanted that pickup to be a little bit tighter and more tidy. But if you don't mind that little bit of air right there, it's perfectly fine for you to just go in from the front to the back. It's certainly easier to pick up stitches like that. So that's going to be up to you, which you want to do on your cowl. So that's the picking up stitches technique. The last thing that you're going to be doing in the Kairos cowl is the beading on that one by one ribbing at the edging of the cowl, which is right down here. And I talk about that in the beading section of this video. Remember, everything is marked. So if you want to skip around to different tips or techniques, you can look down at the timestamps and move around from section to section as you need to. Also remember, this is a companion video. I am assuming that you have the patterns for the Cairo shawl or Cairo's cowl. You certainly can't knit either the shawl or cowl just from watching this. I didn't give you all the math to be able to do that. I so appreciate your support. If you want to hear when I have more patterns or more technique tutorials coming out for my designs, sign up for my mailing list, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Those are the ways to stay up to date with everything that I am up to. It is just an absolute blast for me to share my um, passion and my geeky deep dives into knitting with you all. Don't forget that you can ask questions and I am happy to answer them. Happy knitting, everybody.